Flutter state management is a very broad and often confusing subject, and if you get it right, you can save hours, days and even weeks of work. If you understand state management, you'll be able to build apps such as this one, where you have a list of movies that you can load from an external API, and you can also save your favorite movies and manage multiple user profiles. So if you wanted to build an app like this, you may ask yourself a few questions. How should I structure my app? Where should my business logic go? What is state? Where do I store it? And how do widgets get access to it? What are the common problems with state management and how can I solve them? Which state management solution should I use? And once I have chosen one, will it scale and support my code base as it grows? So in this video I will try to answer some of these questions and give you a good understanding of the most important state management principles. I will cut through all the noise and help you get a deeper understanding of Flutter state management. By the end of this tutorial I will share a new reference movie app that I've built to compare and contrast different state management techniques. The full source code for this app is on GitHub so that you can see how I've used all the principles that we are about to explore. So in this video we will take a deep dive into state management by introducing a simple Flutter app that mixes UI and business logic inside a stateful widget class. We'll talk about some of the problems with this approach and refactor the code using freezed and state notifier. Also, we'll use provider in this tutorial, but the same principles are valid if you prefer Flutter block, Riverpod or other state management packages. Along the way, we will cover important principles and Flutter best practices that you can follow to write high quality code and design complex apps. By the way, you can find a full written tutorial about what we are about to cover on my website so that you can follow this material at your own pace. And make sure to like and subscribe so that you can be notified about my next Flutter videos. Ok, so let's dive in and take a look at this example application. Suppose that we need to create a simple page where the user can enter a profile name and press a save button to persist this to a data store. This page will have some state, so we can implement it as a stateful widget subclass. So if I scroll down, I can show you the build method, which creates a scaffold with an up bar and a flat button action that we can use to submit the profile name. And the body of the scaffold is just a container that holds a text field, which we can see over here. So the way this works is that we can submit a profile name by pressing on the down button on the on screen keyboard or on the save button up here at the top. So in order to get the text value that was entered by the user, we can use a text editing controller, which is passed as an argument to our text field. And in addition to the UI, we also have two state variables. The first one is called is loading, and we can use this to disable the button and the text field callbacks while a profile is being saved. And we also have an error text variable that will show in the text field decoration if there are any errors. So the user can use this text field to type in a name like this and our goal is to validate this and create a new profile when the submit method is called, either on this button's callback or on the unsubmitted callback of the text field itself. So let me show you what the submit method looks like. First of all, we check the name that is passed as an argument and we perform two validation steps. So we start by checking if the name is empty and if that's the case, we set the error text state variable inside a call to set state and we return early. And also we check if a profile already exists with a given name and if that's the case, we set a different error text inside a set state call. For example, here we can save with this name Andrea, which I already used before. And as we can see, we get this error hint under the text field. On the other hand, if we use a name that wasn't already taken, then none of these conditions will be true, and so in that case we will create a new ID, we will set the loading state to true, then we will create the profile using the data store, and we will also reset the state variables. And if everything goes well, we will reach this line at the end which will pop the navigation stack. So for example, here I can use a different name, and if I try to save, I can see that the page is dismissed. So all this code works, but it has some drawbacks. So let's see what's wrong and how to improve it. Well, first of all, all the validation and saving logic happens inside this submit method. 
Now, this is better than putting all the logic inside codebox in the build method itself, as the bits logic and the UI are at least visually separate and belong to different methods. But this is still not good, because all the logic still lives inside this state class. And if we start adding more UI or logic to this class, then our code will quickly become hard to read and reason about. Also, I should point out that to save a profile, we need an external dependency, which is this data store that is passed as a constructor argument to the widget class itself. So one of the best things that you can do to write more maintainable code is to move any non-trivial business logic along with these dependencies outside your widget classes. And you can use packages such as block or state notifier to hold the state and logic that you need. But before we can fully understand what problems these packages solve, we can take a small step and try to use change notifier instead. So over here I have a different implementation that uses a model class based on change notifier to hold all the state and logic that was previously in the widget class. And the way this works is that the data store is now a dependency of the create profile model class and the submit method now doesn't contain any UI code. In fact, the previous implementation was calling navigator of context dot pop on success. And instead, this new code returns true or false and lets the calling code handle the result. And rather than calling set state, we had to call notify listeners every time there is a state change. So let me show you a new version of the create profile page that we can use with the new model class. So this class is still a stateful widget because it needs to hold a text editing controller and we should always create text editing controllers inside a state class. And for this example, we will hook things up with provider, but you could get this working using a different state management or dependency injection package. And you can check my essential guide to provider if you need to learn more about it. But the main idea is that we want to add a parent provider to this widget class so that it has access to the model class that it needs. So what we can do over here is to create a new static create method which returns a widget and this will take a build context and then inside it we can type final data store equal to context dot watch with type data store like this where watch is an extension method for the build context class that we can use to find an ancestor provider of a given type. And then we can return a change notifier provider of type create profile model. And this will take a create argument, which is an anonymous function that we can use to return a create profile model passing the data store as an argument. And then we can pass a create profile page as a child. So if we want to show this page, for example, inside a material page route, then we can call create profile page dot create with context. And this will make sure that it is created with the parent change notifier provider that it needs. And now that we have this, we can scroll down to the build method. And as you can see over here, we get the model with this call to context dot watch with type create profile model. And by doing this, this widget will rebuild when notify listeners is called inside the create profile model class. And once we have the model, we can use it to check its state variables. And we can also pass it as an argument to this submit method, which in turn can call model.submit. And the most important thing is that all the state variables and business logic are no longer in our widget class. So even though we added a bit of boilerplate code to wire things up, we have managed to move the business logic outside our widget class and this makes our code more testable. But we are not done yet because our change notifier implementation still has some drawbacks. As it stands, the create profile model declares these is loading and error text variables as public. And this means that inside our widget build method, we could type something like this model dot is loading equal to true. And this is not something that should ever be allowed because widgets shouldn't be able to directly change the state inside a model class. So we can remove this and to prevent this going forward, we could redeclare these variables as private and we could also add a public getter like this. 
And once we have this, we could update the rest of this code to only set the private variables, while the widget class will only read the public getters. Now, this will make our model class safer to use, but it requires two declarations for each state variable that we need. So this is not a good solution and I can revert this code. And the underlying problem here is that the state variables in our model class are mutable. Instead, by only using immutable model classes, we can enforce an unidirectional data flow. This means that state changes cause our widgets to rebuild, but widgets cannot mutate state directly and they need to do so by other means. For example, by dispatching events or calling methods in our model class. And our change notifier implementation also has some other problems. For example, the error text state variable uses null to indicate that there is no error. This works, but it's not very expressive, and we can't figure this out just by looking at the variable declaration. So it would be better to have an actual type to tell us if there is an error or not. Also, our example only has two state variables, but it's not clear from the context how many different permutations of these variables are valid. Is it okay to have is loading equal to true and a non null error text? We just don't know for sure. So how can we make our state immutable and use the type system to only allow valid state configurations? Well, in Dart, we can make a variable immutable by declaring it as final. And we can use enums to choose between a distinct set of options. For example, here we could declare a create profile state enumeration, which holds the values no error, error, and loading. But Dart enums are not powerful enough because we can't associate additional values to certain cases. For example, we are not allowed to add an error text to this error state because this syntax is not valid. So what we actually want are sealed unions. Unfortunately, the Dart language doesn't support sealed unions. And while there are some ways to work around this using abstract classes, they are not very practical. Luckily, we can use code generation to get the result we want using the Freest package. Freest is a code generator that offers many useful features, from sealed unions to pattern matching to JSON serialization, it can make our life a lot easier. We can install this by opening the pubspec.yaml file, and then we can add the Freest annotation to the dependencies section, and we should also add build runner and Freest under the dev dependencies section. And once we have installed this, let's see how we can use it. In this project, I've created a state folder, and inside here, I can create a new file, which I could call create profile state.dart. And here, we are going to create a sealed union that we can use to represent our create profile state. First of all, we need to import the freeze annotation package. Then we need to type part create profile state.freeze.dart. And we will see why we need this in a second. Then we need to use the freeze annotation, and then we can create an abstract class called create profile state. And then we need to use a mixing. So we're going to use width and then underscore dollar create profile state like this. And then inside the class, we are going to create a factory constructor for each state that we want to represent. For example, we can type const factory create profile state dot no error open and close brackets, and then we can say equal to underscore no error. And then we can add another one. So we can call this create profile state dot error. And this time we're going to pass error text as an argument. And we're going to say equal to underscore error. And finally, we could have one last constructor to represent our loading state and declare it like this. Now we can see that we have a lot of errors in our code. And that's because we haven't run the code generator just yet. So we can save this file and then we can open the terminal and type in this command flutter pub run build runner build delete conflicting outputs. And once we run this, it will generate a new class that can be mixed in with our create profile state. And now that this command has finished, we no longer have any errors. And if we open the project folders, we can find a new file called create profile state dot freeze dot dart. And this contains a lot of useful stuff that we can use with our new type. So let me show you an updated implementation of our create profile model class that uses this new state class. As we can see, the loading and error text variables have now been replaced with state, and this makes it impossible to represent invalid states. And as we can see, every time we need to change the state, 
we can just assign it using one of the constructors that we created in our create profile state class. But this implementation still has some problems. If we forget to call notify listeners following a state change, then our widget won't rebuild. And because the state variable is still mutable, it can still be modified inside the widget class. So the bottom line is that we need something better than change notifier. And because we now need only a single create profile state object to hold all the state that we need, we could modify our create profile model class to extend value notifier of create profile state. Or if we wanted, we could choose a third party alternative such as state notifier or qubit from the Flutter block package. So in this tutorial, I'll focus on state notifier, but the same principle are nearly identical for other solutions. So in order to use state notifier, we first need to add it as a dependency to our pubspec.yaml file. So we can add it like this. And because this project uses provider, then we also need to add flutter state notifier like this. And now that these packages are installed, I can show you a new implementation of our model class that uses state notifier. So let me focus on the differences between our previous change notifier implementation and this new one that uses state notifier. So this is our previous change notifier implementation. And as we can see here, we had to declare the state variable explicitly in our class definition. And we had to call notify listeners every time we changed its value. On the other hand, the new class extends state notifier of create profile state and we can use the super constructor to define the initial state and we can change the state every time we need, but we no longer need to call notify listeners and this makes our code easier to read. Next, let's take a look at an updated implementation of our create profile page that uses the new state notifier model class. So just like we have done before, here we have a static create method that we can use to create a parent provider for our create profile page widget. But this time we are returning a state notifier provider and this needs to specify the type of the model class as well as the type of the state class. And then we can create our create profile model with the data store as well as the child which is our create profile page. Next let's look at how the build method looks like. So in this case, we have this loading and error text variables that are not defined. So let me show you what code we need in order to hook things up. First of all, we want to get the state from the model class. So we can do this by typing final state equal to context dot watch. And then we can pass create profile state as a type and then parentheses like this. And because we are using watch, then our widget will rebuild every time the state changes. And since we are using freeze, we can do some magic and type state dot when. And if we press enter, we get these three callbacks that correspond to all the possible states that we have defined. So if we wanted, we could use when to map our state to the UI like this. Now, this is really powerful because in just a few lines of code, we can get our state and rebuild our widget every time it changes and we can easily return the correct widget for each possible state. Now, in this example, we don't have exactly a one-to-one -one map between state and UI, so this code won't work for us. And instead, what we need to do is to extract the is loading and error text variables from the state object. And we can do that using another method of the freeze package called maybe when. So this is how it works. Here we can type final is loading equal to state dot maybe when. And the way this works is that we can specify only some of the callbacks that we need along with an on else callback that will work as a fallback. For example, in this case, we could pass a loading callback that returns a value of true and an or else callback that returns a value of false. And we could do the same thing for the error text. And in this case, we could use maybe when and use the error callback to return the error text variable that comes from this argument and we can return no otherwise. So feel free to play with when and maybe when so that you can decide when to use one or the other. And finally, let's go and review the submit method. 
So in this case, we get the model object using context.read rather than context.watch, and then we can use it to submit the name. And this in turn will update the state and cause the UI to rebuild again. And the important thing to notice here is that in the submit method, we read the model class, while in the build method, we watch the state class. And if we try to set the state directly from inside the widget class, we get a warning telling us that state can only be used inside subclasses of state notifier. So using state notifier helps us to do the right thing. Okay, so we have reached the end of this tutorial about freeze and state notifier with provider. So let's do a wrap up about what we have learned. We started off with an example app that had a few problems such as mixing business logic and UI, mutable state, as well as null state and invalid state configurations. And the changes we made resulted in a clear separation of logic and UI, and we introduced immutable state with an unidirectional data flow where only valid states are allowed. We have applied good state management principles and refactored a widget class that had some local state. So here are some takeaways from this tutorial. You can use state notifier to create separate model classes for your business logic, and state notifier works very well with provider and river pod. Use sealed unions to represent mutually exclusive immutable states in your app. And the freest package supports sealed unions by code generation, along with when and maybe when methods that make it easy to map your state to the UI. Now, we should make some more considerations when we work with shared or global state, and I'll try to cover this in upcoming tutorials. But the same principles still apply, and they can really help you as your code and team size grows. While the example I presented uses provider and state notifier, with small changes you can make the same code work with flutter block or river pod. In fact, using these principles I built a more complex app inspired by Netflix, and this supports a list of movies with pagination, it also can save movie favorites to a watch list, and it also has multiple profiles as well as local data persistence using the Sembus database. And I have created this app specifically to compare and contrast different state management techniques. So the full source code includes separate implementations using Provider, Riverpod and Flutterblock with more to come in the future. And I'm sharing this for free as long as you do me a favor and give it a star on GitHub. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video that will be all about Riverpod.